Soullash is a fantastic roguelike that's currently in early development. It's only available on itch.io right now, but I read on the forums that the developer wishes to put the game on Steam after it develops a bit further, which is wise in my opinion. You play as someone called the Devourer, who is some kind of world infamous antagonist. As you kill creatures, you devour their souls and grow stronger. It is less about becoming better, and more about restoring yourself to your original power. I really love the premise. It's great fun to be a bad guy like this. In my opinion, this is definitely the best kind of story in any roguelike I've played. There's quite a few races to choose from. You've got Human, Dark Dwarf, Goblin, Dark Elf, Vampire, Troll, Orc, Lich, and Racimi, which are a feline race a bit like the Khajiit. So far I've only tried the Lich and the Dark Dwarf. The Lich doesn't need to eat and instead has a death aura that damages nearby life and leaves corrupted purple ground in its wake. As you damage things, the purple bar gets replenished. As a Lich, you're never going to have to think about food or sustenance at all really, unless you go somewhere where there is nothing living to feed off. I've encountered this deep underground where everything is stone and the bar begins to deplete. Once it reaches zero, you'll die. So you're on a bit of a timer. But if you can find anything organic at all, the aura seems to enjoy feasting upon it. Even stuff like wooden doors, chairs, and tables. The main drawback with the Lich, in my opinion, is that you've got abysmal dark vision. And you'll need to bring torches and candles and stuff with you whenever you go into dark places or at night time. The Dark Dwarf is a type of evil dwarf that has excellent night vision. While underground, the dwarf can see without needing any kind of light source. The price of this vision appears to be reduced vision during the day. This seems especially bad during morning and afternoon. You'll only be able to see 5 or 6 tiles ahead of you, which is rather dangerous because you can walk straight into terrible situations this way. Midnight appears to be the best time to be above ground. The dwarf also has benefits in crafting. When you salvage an item, the dark dwarf is more likely to learn how to make that item. The game has a very nice crafting system. You can cut trees for wood, take a pickaxe and mine for ore, and then visit a crafting station and prepare equipment for yourself. Unlike a lot of games where the stuff you craft is too inferior to make use of, the equipment you make in this game is often very good. Repairing items is a feature, but it doesn't seem to work right now. So I wear stuff until it breaks, and then make more. There are many classes and all of them appear to be evil aligned, which makes sense given the story. But this video will be just about the Necromancer. As a Necromancer you start out with the Raise Zombies spell. You can turn any corpse or pile of bones into a zombie. Zombies have 40 hit points and start out as very good minions. They're on a timer of 10,000 turns, which is almost as good as permanent, you'll be able to get a huge swarm of them because there's no limit to how many zombies you can have. The main problem with the zombie is that it remains the same as you continue to level up, so eventually they become little more than meat shields for enemies to dispatch in a few hits, and they don't deal much damage to the enemy. With that said, you are still able to create such gigantic swarms of zombies that sometimes you can just overwhelm and destroy enemies with them, despite the zombies being far weaker than the enemies. Another drawback to the zombies and minions in general is that they cannot follow you into different areas. This isn't often a problem though, because the areas themselves are incredibly huge. At level 6 or 7, you'll get the raised skeleton ability. This only works on piles of bones, which are relatively rare, but they are light enough to keep in your inventory so you can stock up on bones and carry them around for emergencies or tough fights. The spell produces skeleton champions, which have 100 hit points and are very good especially when you first get them. They have the same problem that the zombies have, in that they are frozen in time, and soon your 40 HP zombies and 100 HP skeletons are facing peasants with 250 hit points, and their effectiveness diminishes considerably. Because of the minions' diminishing effectiveness, your necromancer will have to be dealing the majority of the damage. There are many abilities for damage dealing. You've got Acid Spit, Vampiric Touch, Winds of Decay, which makes a cone of death energy. Corruption, which is a mark that causes an enemy to fight on your side for 5 turns. Corpse Explosion. Weakened Body, which is a heavy debuff that affects a single enemy. And Poison Cloud, which makes a poisonous fog that deals damage to enemies caught inside it. 
There are five more abilities that I have not yet unlocked. Unfortunately, I can't tell you more about these right now. The game is very unstable for me, and with my level 9 character, the game crashes 5 seconds after looting. I've also noticed a trend that the longer the game goes on, the more it crashes. So I'm probably not able to find out what the rest of these abilities are, even with a new character. It's a pretty hard game. I've lost multiple characters getting to where I am, but the difficulty feels right. I'm going to score this early version of Soul Lash, which is version 0.5.0. .0 so that the developer has some feedback, but it's by no means a final score. When the game is finished, I'd like to revisit it and score it again. I'm scoring this early version of Soul Lash a 7.8 out of 10 for its minion mechanics. Even though I've only seen two minions thus far, there might be another minion hiding in those lock skills, so I'm scoring it a 3 just for the benefit of the doubt. Right now it's my favourite roguelike. It has the best story, it has nice minions, the minions need some work and refinement, but they're still great fun. I feel like a proper necromancer when I'm playing this, and the style of necromancy is reminiscent of Dwarf Fortress, which has a fantastic system. Overall, I'm just really happy with the game. I like everything about it, to be honest. Except for the crashing. My criticisms of the game are that minions don't scale, which makes them less useful as time goes on, that minions don't follow you into new areas, and also the instability of the game which has forced me to abandon my level 9 character. Getting to 9 was really hard and I had a lot of close calls, so it's a big shame to have my character killed off by the game crashing rather than any fault of my own. I also really like the aesthetics of the game. It's a matter of taste, some people prefer graphics, and I don't mind good graphics, but the symbols and characters for things really makes my imagination run wild, similar to if I'm reading a book. When I see the Z, I imagine what the zombie might look like, as well as for every other creature and object on the screen. So I really do like these kinds of roguelikes. Thanks for watching, I hope you found this video informative. I've got more videos on necromancy stuff coming soon.